and welcome to my channel. So recently I read a book, surprise, I know, that book was called Starflight and it's by Marissa Landers. I did a whole review, click right here to see. I first saw this book on epicreads.com for their most anticipated February releases and they blurbed it as Firefly meets Across the Universe and while I've never read Across the Universe, I am crazy about Firefly and just Joss Whedon as a whole human being. So not that I needed a ton of convincing, but I picked this up and I loved it. If you like space travel and hijinks and pirates and other awesome, awesome sci-fi things that we don't really get enough of in the YA genre, then I really recommend you pick this up. It was amazing. In Starflight, our main character, Solara, is branded a criminal, so she decides to go off-world. Well, to do that, she ends up pledging herself as an indentured servant to none other than this boy she hated from high school. From there, awesome craziness happens. While I was reading this, I saw Peru's project put up the intergalactic book tag. Because I have intergalactic love for this book, I thought I'd do it. So the first one is name a book that's out of this world. So a book that takes place in a world different than your own. So, you know, pretty much anywhere else besides Earth. And for this, I picked The Seven Realms by Cinder Williams Chima. This takes place in kind of a feudalist kingdom, but there's all this secret magic. Cinder Williams Chima paints the setting so beautifully that I just want to see the tribes and the palace and even just like the peons that live in this kingdom. If I lived in this world and couldn't be Rasa or Rasa's best friend, I would totally go to the academy talked about in the second book. The next one is Black Hole, a book that grabbed you and sucked you in. And for that one, I'm going to pick a really recent read, and that is Illuminate by J. Kristoff Payton Kaufman. Illuminate tells the story of former boyfriend and girlfriend Ezra and Katie, who broke up in the morning and then had their planet destroyed by the afternoon. I was hooked on this book from the first page. Not only is the story really interesting and riveting, but the layout of this book is just beautiful. And because it has such an interesting layout, it just makes you want to keep turning the pages to figure out what's happening and how they're going to get pulled out of this mess that they're in. I started this book on a Tuesday and I finished it on a Thursday. It's hard for me even to express to you how gripping this story was. My heart was racing the whole time and when you have two characters that are as capable and kick butt as Ezra and Katie, it's hard for you to prioritize your other responsibilities in life. The next one is Nebulous, a book with an absolutely beautiful cover. If you've checked out my video, Cover Fails, you know that usually I have a ton of problems with book covers. Mostly me thinking that they don't represent the story well. And one that I think represents the story fantastically is Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendari Blight. I also normally have a huge problem with girls with dresses on the covers, but this one is so appropriate to the story. Plus the fact that it's all black and white except for red makes it really haunting just from the cover. Really gives you an idea of what the story is about. Not to mention, blurb, Cassandra Clare, right there. Why haven't more people read this? Next one is Lightspeed, a book you would travel at light speed for. And however many awesome new releases of 2016 there are, my answer is always going to go to a Kendari Blake book. This year's Kendari Blake book is Three Dark Crowns, which tells the story of triplet sisters on a remote island where, power, where there's powerful magic and political intrigue, and it sounds so good, and I want it, and I love sister books or books about females who don't hate each other and I'm hoping that's, that's what this is going to be. The next one is Multiverse, a companion or spin-off series that you love. I actually didn't have a ton of choices for this, but I know that if I did, I would have still picked Bridget's Quest by PC Cass. It is a spin-off of her, of her Divine Mai book series. It's this one and another book called Elfame's Quest, and they're set in the same land as the Divine Mai series. They only take place a generation later, and I feel like the land and the atmosphere is still really vivid, and that was one of the things I loved about the Divine Mai series. Next one is Gravity, your favorite fictional pairing that had a certain pool towards each other. And for this one, I'm going to go with Sabat and Jack from the Blood Red Road series. I hardly ever hear anyone talking about this story, and I feel like that's because a lot of people are put off by the writing style used in this, and that is a shame because once you get used to it, the story has such depth to it and such complex, complex interesting characters that it really leaves you thinking. Now, Sabat and Jack's love is a really, really slow burn in the first book and picks up a little bit better in the second book, but that's what I love about it because it builds so slow that it feels so natural, yet you just kind of know they'll end up together. The next one is Big Bang, the book that started you off on your reading journey. And for this one, it is Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. I've read Ella Enchanted at least 12 times. I used to read it every summer, and then I started reading it every summer and every winter. I even remember when I first got it, me and my bestie Taylor, reading it in a tree on our recess time. 
it has such a special, wonderful place in my heart. And for a long time, it was all that I would read. But eventually I started picking up other things. Next is Asteroid, a collection of novellas or short stories. And probably my favorite of all of the novellas and short stories I own is The Demigod Diaries by Rick Riordan. If you are a hardcore lover of Percy Jackson or the Heroes of Olympus series, you've got to check out Rick Riordan's novellas. He has this one and like three others. And it's just like little Percy stories or little Leo stories or little stories about random people that you've never met before, but they are really, really Really interesting and they have all the stuff you love about a Rick Riordan book just in 500 less pages. Next is Galaxy, a book that has lots of different POVs. The one with the most possible POVs I could think of was the books in the Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin. I think throughout the entire series there's something like 36 or 37 different POVs that we read from and while at times that can be uber confusing, it does make those chapters when you're reading from your favorite character's POV that much more special. And I need more Arya chapters and less Sansa, like way less Sansa. Let's just do no Sansa chapters at all. Okay, great. The last one is Spaceship, a title of a book that you think would be a great name for a spaceship. For this one, I easily picked The Merciless by Daniel Vega. I feel like you're not gonna mess around with a ship called Merciless. You're gonna see The Merciless on your radar screen and be like, guys, we need to get out of this sector. You're gonna floor your jump drive and open that stargate to somewhere far across the verse from The Merciless. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Don't forget to check out Starflight by Melissa Landers. It's so, so good. And while you're checking things out, don't forget to like and subscribe for new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Thanks.